Oh, good. We're going chasing. Hello, dear, and welcome to... We're going chasing. Hello, no. and welcome to... We're going chasing. Now, we have a lot on the agenda, lads, so we'll cut the chase and get straight down to the business. Hello and welcome to the latest episode of the We're Going Chasing Cheltenham Countdown series. I'm joined once again by Paddy Aspel, and this evening we're going to be discussing the Arkel Novice Chase. Paddy, Marine National has had a uh, tough preparation, I suppose, uh, running in the Irish Arkel, and he's still the 5-2 to two favourite here. Um, would you be far or against him? Well, I suppose it opens the race up a little bit from from a betting point of view, anyway, Killian, but... Look, that was his first blip, wasn't it? But it would take a fair bit of forgiving now. Obviously, it came out in the wash, didn't it, about the wind up and the tongue tie on the day. And I think the thing that disappointed me mostly was because I was very strong on him going into the DRF was, you know, he never featured in the race in any shape or form that day. He fenced okay, didn't do an awful lot wrong in that department. But I just didn't like Michael Sullivan's body language from the back of the last. He, he he just looked like a very, very empty horse, like there was nothing underneath him. So he's on a fair all recovery mission here, but you know, he's he's a very classy horse. We, we we don't want to underestimate him. But me personally, on a whole, you look at Barry Connell's numbers, he had a he had a bumper, first time bumper winner at Nab and maybe a few weeks ago, but when Marie National won at the, the Christmas meeting, that was his only winner in the whole month of December. They've maybe just not been in the fullest of health, these horses. So, yeah, it's a bit of a recovery mission for Marie National. So, even though he's not skimpy short, I, I'd be happy to leave him, leave him alone myself. How about you? Yeah, I, I don't think he'd, he'd go off much shorter than what he is now anyway. Um, like, I think uh, quick ground is going to be the key. Like, if they, they got really nice ground on, on the Tuesday, I think people might latch on to him because there isn't, a real clear one to look at, like Illa Tomps found a 50, Facil Vega, if he runs, they're all sort of, they're, they're all beating each other, aren't they? And um, yeah. I just don't know, is there a proper two mile chaser in there? I sort of like Quilixios. I think there was a lot to like about him in, um in Nace the last day when he beat Sapphire and Mr. Policeman, like Mr. Policeman for, for all the hype, he probably hasn't lived up to it, but he was very impressive um on, on Sunday in in Town beating Arctic Brazil and um, and that was that was his his probably best performance over fences and like Quilixios beat him with with a lot in hand I thought um and Sapphire is is going to be he'd be well looked at for some of the some of the handicaps in Cheltenham the the plate and the the grand annual so like he's he's sixteens and twenties for those but I'm sure he'll have plenty of people looking at him but I'd say Quilixios now at tens is, is is something I'd be looking at I think it's Probably a race that I'd find it hard to see an Irish horse not winning it, but I'm not fully sure which one of them it's going to be. And mm. it's muddied a bit further by in the pocket is is in training and there's talks of him being supplemented, but again, there's nothing concrete there. I think it's next week that the or the the next couple of weeks that the final supplement and stage is closed. So we will have an answer closer to the time, but him off one run. It's it's hard to see him winning an Arkle as well. Um, it'd be a, um, a miracle training performance from Henry de Bromhead if he does. Um, but yeah, at the price at the moment, at Quilixios at 10s, I think he might go off a bit shorter than that. Um, so I'd be sort of on him. Um, what do you reckon on JPR 1's chances? He seems to be the sort of leading British hope. Yeah, it, it looked maybe like he was going to train off a little bit, didn't it? Up until that performance last time. And I think George Tissardi came out with a very strong statement saying, you know, he probably as good as the as good as the, the British would have to have a go at the Irish in this race. And he's a very, very solid horse. He really is. He's a fine specimen. And I'm glad that his season has, has come back round a little bit. You know, he's bang there on RPRs numbers wise with yeah. the best of these and I mean, look, you take that you out. He had the race in the bag, and and, and it was a kid. It wasn't even a mistake. He just he just sort of kind of pitched and and, and sprawled a little bit, and and it was a proper unseat. So, I mean, I know he did disappoint next time, but firmly back on track next time. So, yeah, he's a very very solid horse here. And I mean, we had a quick chat, didn't we? I mean, whether Blood Destiny is going to turn up here? He's a hard horse to weigh up. He's still only a five year old Blood Destiny, and. I just was worried a little bit the way the engine cut out as quick as it did the last time. But 
you know, we are very recency biased with these horses. And, you know, he'll be coming here a fresh horse if he does turn up Blood Destiny. And as we've seen him on his debut at Nace, you know, he was very, very good. He was awesome to watch. I think that's why we were so disappointed yeah. with him yeah. next time. And obviously, Ile Te Tom, he's been to a festival, hasn't he? And he, he looks a good bit easier to ride this time round. Obviously, he had no chance over that trip at Limerick, um, you know, where he still ran a very good solid race. But I thought again, Killian just got an absolute dynamite ride off Danny Mullins. He just set it up to have one good strong go at the winner at Leopardstown that day and nailed him on the line. It was it was exceptional. But look, without being absolutely top notch, Ilete Tom, he's a very, very solid yardstick and it'd be very hard to see him out of the four here with a clear round. But Marine National, not going to forgive him that last run at that sort of price. So probably going to give the UK a good plug here with, with JPR1. I think he's a very, very solid horse and he's a very reasonable price. But yeah, as, as trying to actually find the winner, this is a trappy one. It's, it's a wide open race this year. It is, yeah, and it's very competitive. I think it's been sort of disrespected a small bit. People are saying it's a very weak renewal. I, I don't know, is it? Is it as weak as what we've seen before? Like there's there's no super horse, there, there's no John Bonner El Fabiolo here, but there are there are some very, very good horses still. And like if Marine National bounced back, people if Marine National had won in the DRF, people would be saying, Oh, Marine National's the, the next sort of next horse to to win an Arkelin and to go out to be a champion chaser, maybe. And you know, it's like people are marking up the, the quality then of Ville Thompson, found a 50, etc. But um, I think it's been disrespected a small bit, but for all, there isn't probably going to be a superstar out of it. I think it still has the potential to be a very good renewal and it's an intriguing race as well. Yeah, and, and more so than anything, it's competitive. Yeah. You know, it's it's not top heavy, you know, or a match on paper between two horses because like you mentioned about Marine National, if he had of um, got the job done at the DRF. His price would be the other way around. He'd, he'd be a two to five shot. So yeah, no, it, it's it's actually given this race a real competitive look to it. But I probably would agree, maybe to a certain extent, we haven't got an absolute top notcher here. But the market tells us that. Yeah, but it'd be great to see it like second race on a Tuesday, especially when the Supreme, if Ballyburn doesn't turn up, could be very competitive too. It'd be nice to see four or five of them jump the last with a chance. Um, sure. We we haven't seen that in some articles gone by with small fields or whatever, but you know it'd be nice to see four or five of them jump in the last together and get a, get a really good solid race. But anyway, Paddy, you've gone with JPR one. I'm going with Quilixias. So we've got Ginny's Destiny fight two at the top of the market. Factifile, he's sort of non runner no bet. He, you can get him at seven to four. Um, it's best at anti post rules. He's he's a five's chance. Uh, Gaelic Warrior nine to two. Facil Vega sort of that five to one, six to one. Iroko the same. Grey Dawning sevens. Found a fifty tens. Uh, it's 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 a hard one to figure out, Paddy. I suppose we don't know where where horses are going between here and the the Brown Advisory. But Ginny's Destiny is one that's definitely going to be here. Um, he was a good winner last time out in Cheltenham. And how do you see his chances? Well, I think Paul Nichols has actually said he couldn't believe how fat this horse was when it came from Tom Lacey's. So, and he got well turned over, didn't he, on, on debut yeah, yeah. for the yard. But he's not looked back since. Very, very likeable horse. The thing I like about Ginny's Destiny is without being a big slow boat on the front end, he really does, he's very generous under pressure. He's a real finder uh, for pressure and it's very difficult to knock a horse like that. You know, he's an eight-year-old already, but, you know, with very limited miles on the clock. And I think if someone like Paul Nichols can get hold of a horse that are lacking in fitness, you know, the amount of improvement that he could still get from this chap is unreal. I mean, he's only rated 147, but that's simply because he hasn't actually seen the track that much. So he could have a fair bit of improvement still to come, but... I think this is a cracking race, to be honest. Um, we mentioned a minute ago about we could have a, a surprise package in in the pocket. Well, Oroko has got a very similar story, really, hasn't he? Because, you know, his his um, prognosis wasn't looking too clever there at all. 
according to Ollie Green all at one stage. I mean, he, he, it was the, the, the vibes were that this chap was finished for the season, but he, John Johnny O'Neill Jr. gave him a race course gallop the other day. And it was interesting. It is starting to sound like he, he's going to rock up here, a row going. Ollie Green all did mention when he won, obviously he won at the festival last year, still looked very, very green. This horse was off the bridle at the top of the hill. Mm, a row, yeah, yeah. um, and it was a stamina that probably got him home that day. But Holly Greenall said when he won over fences last time at Warwick that if anything he wanted to come back to the minimum with this horse that he, this horse had actually quickened up for jumping a fence. So the fact that, but even listen to to him speaking the other day in an interview, he was still very tied between the two and two and a half, but seems to be leaning in this direction. And Aroko, he's a very, very similar to Ginny's Destiny, very limited mileage on the clock. And because he's one of them horses that runs behind the bridle, very hard to gauge how much petrol is left. I, I do like them type of horses. So if he was to turn up here, I know he does lack in experience, but for what horses can lack in experience, they are the ones that are open for, for that bit more scope of for for improvement. So I'd be very keen on Oroko if he was to turn up here and and, and fact if I didn't. Yeah, I suppose it's like looking at it, it'd be an unbelievable training performance, like to get him back when it looked for all the thing that he was going to be ruled out for the season and to get him back and to win, to win a grade one at the festival, having only had one chase start to be very impressive. And and I'd imagine he will he will go close. And I think fact to file his sort of participation in the race is it's hard to know with what Willie's going to do. He's he wasn't given anything away uh, the other day at the the national way it's either on fact to file and to imagine it'll be it'll be a late enough shout but i could see fa fact to file wherever he goes he's going to be very hard to beat and i think if he did i to be honest I, i'd much rather run him here than, than run him in the brown advisory and um, mm -hmm. just just purely because i think it's it's a nicer education for for the horse and um, like he's he's only had the few starts over fences and I suppose coming straight from bumpers last year, he is still very inexperienced on the track. And I think it's nice education there in the in the turners over over a shorter trip and then you can stretch him out the next year then. But I suppose some of Willie's other horses, Gaelic Warrior, he, he was well beaten by Fact to File uh, last time out. And then you've got Fasal Vega who could potentially step up in trip. And I suppose he'd be an interesting one too. I'd find it hard to see him out of the out of the frame really in in, in this sort of race. Um, if if he did run in it, but it's it's again very competitive. And like if you were to get Ginny's Destiny, Gaelic Warrior, Oroko, Fasel Vega, Grey Dawning all in together, it it'd be mm. you'd be hoping they'd all be jumping the last together, and um, and we we get another really exciting finish. I think Ginny's Destiny having the two starts over course and distance, um, on on the new track the last twice in as is definitely going to help him, and. Like I don't think Anthony is going to want to take him on for the lead either, um, because he is he's a very strong stare and he he'll he'll really serve it up to you there. So I'd I'd imagine he might get a not a soft lead, but that there won't be too many horses looking to take him on anyway. Yeah, I think if they are going quicker than than Ginny's there, if they're if they're in front of him early doors, they're probably going too hard, Killian, yeah. you know, that kind of way. Uh, but no, very, very solid horse. And yeah, if we get them even the seven or eight at the top of the market, if you, if you were to get five of them to at least be declared and turn up here, you'd have a, a proper horse race. Ray Dawning is an interesting one. He's got an awful lot of ability, but you know Dan Skelton, he has highlighted this thing where when he does hit the front, he does run at his fences a little bit and obviously goes mad left, doesn't he? But you know throughout the race, he's very, very good. You know He's, he's a very economical jumper and huge engine. I mean, he, he'd, have, he'd have gone close to beating Ginny's destiny. He, he, he how he stayed up at Cheltenham when, when he was second that day, is, uh, I don't know. But then he did it again at Warwick the last day. Just when he does hit the front, he tends to run out of fence a little bit and, and, and wheel down to his left. So you've always got to factor that in. But he's got a huge engine, without a doubt. But no, proper horse race here. And I mean, wherever Factifile goes, what he did at Leopardstown, I mean, even when they turned down the back and Mark Walsh went and joined town end on Gaelic Warrior and he set him alight a little or he set his own horse alight a little bit so he took back again um, you know he's, he's, he's got plenty of pace fact to file and obviously when Gaelic Warrior just sort of you have 
I won't say pitch, he didn't even pitch, but he, he just kind of nodded a little bit at the back of, I think it was the fourth last that day, wasn't it? And and that appeared to be where he started to struggle from. And I mean, when, when you look at him, obviously he was well beat. In fact, the vial just just skittled, skittled on for home. But a Gaelic warrior didn't even have the, the petrol to get over the last fence. I know he made it to the other side, but he, he came to a standstill at town and got unseated. So, you know, the, you would just think that something happened that day and, and, and he didn't give his run in. But that said, even though Factifile had to run, you know, the last quarter of the race on his own and unchallenged, he was still very good on the clock. You know, you, you love to see things like that, um, you know, totally unchallenged, but still running a good number. And the fact that he has gone straight from bumpers to fences, yeah, he hasn't got as much jumping done it maybe as, as some of his, his rivals, but absolutely huge engine in there for sure. And yeah, w- whichever direction he goes, he'll take a fair bit of stopping. No, agreed, no, agreed 100%. Agreed. So, Paddy, for you, fact to file if he's here, if not, if not, I would be looking at JP's other one here, a Roco. Although, he, although he's inexperienced, got an awful lot of ability, I'd say. And I'd be sort of, I'd be in the same camp, fact to file if he runs. If he doesn't, and there was a bit of a cut in the ground, I think it'll bring Fasal Vega into it. But yeah, I'd I, I'd be a vote to fact to file if he's here, and I'd say a tentative one to Fasal Vega if he does turn up. But that brings us to the end of the Turner's preview. Thanks a lot for, again, Paddy, for the last last few races, the Turner's, the Arkell and the Triumph Hurdle. It was great having you on. And hopefully you all enjoyed it too. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. That's how they start the-